In this video, we'll be looking at what is ChatGPT? How does it work? And some of the amazing things it can do, or at least impressive anyway. All done with a ServiceNow twist. What is ChatGPT? It's basically like having a super smart or at least semi-intelligent robot as your personal assistant. It's trained on a massive data set of human conversations and can understand and respond to a wide range of topics, inputs. Just don't expect it to make your breakfast just yet. Now, if you haven't been living under a rock for the past week, you'll know that it's already gained a massive following. It's taken just five days to get 1 million users. Now, to put that into perspective, it took Netflix over three years to do that. So this is massive. As you can see, ChatGPT is pretty good at carrying on with the conversation with a human user. It can understand and respond to questions, make small talk, and even engage in more complex discussions. As long as you don't ask it anything too difficult, like what's the meaning of life or some quantum physics. But ChatGPT isn't just a chatbot, it's a versatile tool that can be used across many different applications. Things such as language translation, customer service or even debugging code. The possibilities are endless. And that got me thinking, how could we apply chat GPT? And I understand at the minute it's only beta testing version. And to be honest, down the line, you'll probably have to pay for it. But this is massive because it's going to pave the way for other organizations to come up with something similar. It did get me thinking because I thought, how could I apply this to things we do in service now? Just out of interest, how would that work? So I thought I'd do this video and we'll throw some scenarios at it and we'll see what comes out. So let's hop over and give it a try. Okay, so I've gone over to the OpenAI website. I'll put a link in the description below. Um, but the first thing we need to do is go and try it. So you need to scroll down, go to try GPT. Now what's going to happen when you click that, um, I've already signed up. But it's going to ask you to sign up. You can do so in the Google. You just click the Googly thing and it allows you in. But now we're in here, we've got a bunch of pre-selected examples that we can pick from um, to try. But we're not going to do that. We're going to try some ServiceNow scenarios. So we're going to start simple. We're going to do two or three, right? So I'm going to start by saying, um, I want a UI policy to hide some fields on a change record. Let's do it. Let's see if it even knows. Wow, it does know service now. So noticing that I didn't actually put any context. I didn't say hide some fields on a change record in service now. It just assumed that what I was talking about. And now it's starting to create instructional um, advice on how to do that. So go to change your UI policy. Okay. I'm not going to read it word for word, but it's nice that it's giving us some instructions. Now, I did do this before, not this particular scenario, but I did point out a couple of issues with it before. So I wouldn't say it's 100% perfect, but it's it's pretty impressive, right? Now, the UI policy is applied. Um, let's carry on this conversation. I haven't done this, but why wouldn't I do that in a client script? I have no idea what this is going to say, but let's go for it. And then we'll try something a bit more advanced. You can also use a client script to hide fields on a form. The thing is, it doesn't it doesn't start saying, well, what's best practice, does it? Using a client script to hide is probably more complex. So it does tell you why and under what circumstances, but it does it does it give you best practice? Possibly not. Okay, but this is still quite impressive. So let's think of something else. Let's think of another more intelligent scenario that we might come across. Let's get it doing some scripting if we can. Okay. So Let's go for, I have an incident. When I close it, I'm writing in a different way just to really challenge it. Uh, when I close it, 
Um, I want a problem record created. Ooh, I know. And auto assigned to the problem management group. Does it know I'm working with service now? Let's see. Right, okay. Wow. So it's suggesting to use a business rule. So I haven't told it what, what I want to do. I haven't told it I want to use business rule or flow or anything. But it's suggesting using a business rule. Let's see what that says. In the when, it's an after. Okay, I'll go with that. Wow. So now what it's starting to do is create the script for me. Oh, that could be quite dangerous. So I can look at it and, and say, you know, I can look at script and say, well, and it's got copy code as well. But I can look at script and, and say, you know, is that what I want and tweak it necessarily? But there'll be some people out there that will see this, get excited and just reading above and perhaps just copy it verbatim, right? Without the kind of best practice, best practice scenario underneath it. Let's just, okay, so it's told us a business rule. Hang on. Ah, oh, shouldn't I use a flow for this? I, that should trick it, right? Ooh, <laughs> but it doesn't. You can also use a flow to automatically create. So I know, you know, I did a podcast on it with um, the colleague of mine not long ago, but uh, to flow or not to flow. But you, you should, you know, it, it, it's automatically think flow rather than business rule. Um, nowadays okay that's quite impressive okay okay so we've thrown two scenarios we've said can you give me a uh, ui policy now i've started getting it to do some scripting and even said well hang on shouldn't i do a flow that is quite impressive the one thing we have to be mindful of with this is it doesn't do any google searching so it's not like google it doesn't go and search the internet it doesn't have access to the internet it's based on information that it was trained on before 2021 so I couldn't throw scenarios at it that are kind of 2021 and um, more modern. Um, trying to think of the word. Because it'd kind of say, ha ha, you, you know, I'd, I'd be able to point and say, you're probably wrong, right? But just be mindful of that. And at the minute, it is in testing, um, but this is really quite impressive. And I would have thought, you know, further down in the line, I would have thought perhaps it will be a paid kind of transaction, perhaps. Um, but at the minute, it's in testing. So go ahead, go and have a play. So there you have it, a brief overview of chat GPT with a little bit of ServiceNow sauce sprinkled on top. So I hope you found the video informative and entertaining, or at least not too boring. And if there's anything else you want to know about ServiceNow or even how we can apply applications such as chat GPT to it, then drop something in the comments. If you haven't yet subscribed, there's no hard sell at all, but please consider doing so. It does make all the difference. And if you have, Make sure you're smashing the bell icon so you get notified every time I upload a new video just like this one. Till then, I've been Russ, this is Service Nerd.